Yo, what's going on guys? Arix here, and today I want to talk about Kena Bridge of Spirits. This is one of the games on my most anticipated list this year. I have been super looking forward to it, and despite the fact that it has been pushed back recently, we are still not too far away from the release for this game. So today I wanted to basically talk about everything we know right now, and kind of just go over some of the most important things, the story, the gameplay, various things about the world, just kind of give you a Kena summary for those of you guys that are looking forward to it and want a sort of refresher as to what to expect when the game drops next month. So if you guys do enjoy this, a like would be super appreciated and let me know in the comments down below if you guys are looking forward to this too. Now obviously first things first on the release date front, as a reminder, the more recent release date was slated for the end of August, but they did recently put up a tweet to say they pushed it back to September the 21st just to give them a little bit more time to polish the game. And honestly, I am completely fine with that. Like they have been working super hard on it and the team are super passionate. And if it means they can put out a better quality game, then waiting an extra month is not a problem. So September the 21st is the date you want to put in your calendar for when you can play Kena Bridge of Spirits, PS4, PS5, and also on PC. But what exactly is this game? Well, top level, it's an upcoming third person action adventure game that'll see you exploring this vibrant Pixar style world full of colorful characters, cute companions and mysterious looking enemies. It's got fast paced action focused combat that'll see you juggling melee, ranged and special abilities. And then from there, you'll of course also be exploring the vast open world, climbing, uncovering secrets, solving puzzles, unearthing collectibles. It's basically a magical journey waiting to happen. And if you're seeing or if you kind of get any any 3D Zelda vibes from this, that would not be surprising given that uh, Ember Labs, the studio behind this, are massive Zelda fans. In fact, one of the projects they did before, an animation project, was a Majora's Mask one. I'm sure all of you guys have seen that before. If you haven't, definitely check it out. It is fantastic, but safe to say, they're Zelda fans. But what about the story? What exactly are we going to be doing in Kena Bridge of Spirits? Well, the game itself revolves around a character named Kena, who's a young girl who finds herself in a destroyed village that basically befell a terrible calamity many, many years ago. She works to restore it by guiding spirits from one realm into another to help them move on. Now as Kena, players will then help these spirits combat their regrets and confront their unfinished business. And we also know that at some point, the story will also feature a tragedy related to Kena's past involving her father, but any more than that, we don't actually know. And of course, given that this is a narrative driven experience, it's fair to say that they're keeping the story beats relatively close to their chest, so we're just gonna have to wait and see. But basically, we are the guide for the spirits from one realm to another. So if we then jump over and talk a little bit about the gameplay, of course, again, as mentioned, it's a third person action adventure game where you use Kana's magical abilities to combat a terrifying darkness that seeks to wreak havoc. You have a staff in one hand, which you can, of course, combine light, heavy and charged attacks in battle. You can see some sort of gameplay footage in the background. Honestly, I just love like, the, the awesome visual style paired with the kind of cool particles and just like the vibrancy of it. It looks super cool. But of course, you've also kind of got the nice flow to combat. It's not just all show. It, of course, is, uh, you know, at least it looks like it feels great. Obviously, I haven't had a chance to play but I do like what I see. So you can combine light, heavy and charged attacks in battle, but you also have a range move set because you have a bow and you also have the rot at your disposal. Basically, as you explore the world, you collect rot, which are the little kind of fluffy, cute looking creatures that you'll see throughout the trailers. And by collecting these little buddies, you can basically gain powerful abilities, make discoveries and transform the environment. They even have hats you can collect too, which is awesome. However, it's worth noting the rot will only help in battle once their courage has been increased, which can be done by attacking enemies, so kind of just through experience. And Emberlab have also clarified that the rot found on your journey will not die in combat. So they said, uh, and I quote, you don't need to worry about digging tiny little graves or anything morbid like that. These companions are discoverable in hidden places around the world, meaning you'll need to check every nook and cranny to collect all 100 of them. In combat, there's also a magical shield with a depletable bar that lowers depending on, of course, how many times you use it to defend against enemy attacks. And this also provides hints in the environment and can sort of activate certain objects. Kana will, of course, also feature puzzles. Like an example they gave is that, say, if there's like a ravine you need to cross and you kind of can't do it, then uh, you might be able to use the rot to say pull a bridge towards you and kind of like create a pathway. So in a sort of typical, I mentioned earlier that sort of 3D Zelda vibes, you can sort of expect exploring the world, solving some puzzles to navigate your way around, and of course dealing with the combat in between. I'm personally super excited to see the range of abilities you have once you start uncovering and getting more and more rot on your team. I think that much is going to be fantastic. 
Now when it comes to the world, you'll encounter a village fairly on in the game, and this is going to serve as your hub, and from there you can then travel to several connected regions. They've described the game as sort of wide linear, so this is not an open world game. They are of course trying to tell a story, and for that reason there is a, a degree of linearity to it, but that being said, the wide aspect means that there are secrets to find, things to uncover, discover, that sort of thing, so you can still go off the main path, just don't expect a full scale open world game. The next question of course is how long is it going to be and they said in an interview with Game Informer that it's tough to put an exact number on this because of the number of side activities you can do but Josh did say that they set out to make something that players could comfortably finish over a weekend. So don't expect this to be a sort of huge RPG 80 hour epic. This is definitely the sort of thing that you can complete. Like I feel like a good comparison without obviously having played the game would probably be something like the new Ratchet and Clank. You know, if you golden line it, you could finish it over a weekend, no problem. If you decide to go off and do some of the uh, side activities and things like that, then it can last you a little bit longer. I feel like that's probably gonna be a decent comparison. If I had to hazard a guess, I'd say that would sort of fall somewhere within the like 10 to 15 hour range. But again, until we play it, I won't necessarily know. But either way, that's what they said. You can probably do it comfortably in a weekend, which for me is great because honestly, it's a very busy time. I don't want to miss out on this game at all. So uh, the fact that I can jump in, play it every weekend, I'm all about that. Now, in terms of difficulty, of course, that's one of the other things that uh, often people want to know about. They said that, again, in the Game Informer interview, it's interesting because in the studio, in Ember Lab, they have got a lot of Sekiro and Soulsborne fans on the dev team. However, they said that while that is the case, it's not going to be quite as challenging as Souls games. I mean, this is definitely not a Dark Souls style game or a Soulsborne style game, but they did say there is still challenge in this game. So as nice and kind of cute and sort of, you know, vibrant it looks, don't expect it to be just like a walk in the park. They said you will still be challenged if you play on the highest setting. Now, of course, while I mentioned before, it is on PS4, PS5 and PC. If you do happen to play on PS5, they also do have some DualSense stuff on here. You can basically use the haptic feedback and the adaptive triggers to feel the bowstring when you draw that back. They said you'll feel sort of a light tension to push against them on the trigger. And if you pull all the way, you'll feel like it's sort of increased that tension. So that kind of feedback is going to be pretty cool. And I would imagine it may well also factor into, say, some of the puzzle solving elements, things like that. But as you can see, there's quite a lot of things to look forward to, this awesome world to explore, fantastic abilities, lots of things to collect. So for the collectors out there, you know, even if you like, even if it is a shorter game and it is more sort of wide linear, there is still going to be stuff to go and pursue. So uh, I definitely want to try and get all the rock because I feel like that's going to, especially if they link to abilities, I'm quite interested to sort of see what you get if you find all 100. But either way, that is it for the time being. So there's a quick summary on what to expect from Cana Bridge of Spirits. Again, if you guys are looking forward to it, let me know in the comments down below. I can't wait to play this. So of course, once the game does launch, you can expect some more videos on the channel. If you want to catch more from us at Arix Gaming, don't forget you can catch the guys 269 and Paradise Central streaming over on Twitch weekdays, playing a variety of games. If you guys want to jump in, tune in, watch, and even join in, then make sure you check them out. The links to those are in the description box down below. And of course, you can join the Discord to get involved in all of the discussions.